Hello and welcome back to the Jigme Kelting Show. Or if you're new here, welcome. I have a very special guest today, Canadian and Vancouver native and greatly respected record producer and music engineer Garth Richardson is virtually sitting down with me this afternoon due to the very unfortunate circumstances our world is in today. Garth comes on my show today with a wealth of knowledge, insight, and firsthand experience in the music industry, and we're going to chat all about it. Garth, welcome to the show. Hi. How goes? It's, it's going great. I mean, how's everything uh, over there? Well, you know what? Uh, we, ha we had some snow. It, it lasted about a week, and then it's all gone, right? He was there one day, and it rained, and then it was all gone. So, so. But you guys are, like, snowed, snowed in still, correct? You guys are, like, yeah, deep. I mean, I mean, we just got hit by snow last night, too, so. Oh, uh, again? Yeah. But it wasn't <laughs> Sorry, I have to laugh, because you want... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to live, live, live in a Toronto. I moved to California because I didn't like the snow. And then when I wanted to come back to Canada, I decided to, to, to come out here because you don't have to shovel, shovel the rain. Right. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad last night. I think it's, it, it was, it was way worse the first time, but. I mean, right every time around it, it wasn't that bad because I, i've seen the states i mean they got hit by like snow like twice and and right. both were right. like blizzards um, right right but um uh, but yeah let's let's uh let's get right into the questions um okay. first first one i've got for you is uh what inspired or or ignited your passion for music well my father used to make records in the 60s and the 70s and since since like about the age of five I was hanging out with my dad in the studio. He used to do Coca-Cola commercials, and he was the he was one of the main players that put rock and roll with Coca-Cola, right? So uh, I got handed at the age of five my first reel to reel to reel tape, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And I was looking at it, going, "This is incredible." So I've always been hanging out with him. And then when it came time to go get a real job, I just never left uh, left the studio because because that was home for me. It was kind of like I often wonder how how uh, how hockey players when they uh, when they leave the sport that they that no longer have that that camaraderie inside of the locker room. It's the same thing for me. It's like when you're in the studio with all these people, it's it's kind of that comfortable feeling, right? So so. So I've been doing this now. I think this is my this is going into my so 49th year doing doing this right, and it's like I could never do anything else because it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. You talked about the fun part of it, but what year did you become a, a professional producer, a mixer, a music engineer? Oh. Um, because and 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 how did you know that you wanted to do this job? Was there something that kind of sparked it? Or was there just a random moment and you said, I wanted to be that? Um, well, it's, um, well, I think when you get paid for the first time is when you become a professional. If someone pays you to do something, um, if someone pays you to sweep the floors at a studio, then you're becoming a professional. Uh, 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 I started out at my dad's studio when I was actually 15 years old. The first, my first real gig was, oh, it's actually Bob Seger, Night Moves. And I got to plug in the microphones and I got to help out on that session. And I think that was the point to where I went, this is really what I want to do, right? Because it's cool, right? So, so you know, you know, I got to see them cut that song. They did it in like about eight hours, like the whole song I was finished, right? So, so that was kind of my my actual first like. This is really what what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, very very interesting there, and what's really fascinating I I found out about you oh. was that was that <laughs> you've You've had the chance to work with uh, Ozzy Osbourne and yes. working on, and working on his records. I mean, yeah. did you ever have the chance to work on that uh, Crazy Train song? No, 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 no. That 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 was that was uh, before. 
for, for my time, I got to help out on the actual live and loud record. And uh, I was on the road with the band and we had to go re record some shows and Ozzy's great. Uh, what you see on TV is exactly how he is. He's a kind, most wonderful, funny, amazing guy. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of people get to really- Oh, 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 oh. and my first child was conceived on, on the Ozzy Osbourne tour bus. For all you people out there that want to know some some kind of in inside dirt, you know, interesting, uh, interesting there for sure. Um, I mean, you've worked with countless uh, timeless artists and bands, and and how much people are gonna really remember? Hold on a second. Yes. Uh, if you want to, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, okay, okay. sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was gonna ask you about the, uh, you know, you've worked with countless timeless artists. Yeah. Um, you know, even you worked on Taylor Swift. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had it, yeah. Luckily enough, because you know, through your resume, I've seen it's more majority of the rock kind of, uh, rock and roll kind of category. Uh, but what kind of sparked that kind of interest to work on that record for Taylor Swift? Well, well, I got asked by Bob Ezrin, who was actually producing the record, and you wanted me to help out on a day or two of the sessions. You, you know, the problem, the, the actual problem is if you get a hit doing a certain genre of music, you, you tend to always end up doing that genre because uh, uh, the funny thing is the actual music business is if you're good at hip hop and you do like a hip hop hit, then every single hip hop artist is going to want, want, want to work with you. Um, uh, the reason why like I got pigeonholed was uh, because, well, first of all, I do like rock. Um, I haven't you happen to have had a few records that got noticed. So, so then every single rock band wanted to work with me, right? So, so, but Taylor Swift, I've done country, I've done hip hop. Uh, um, it's fun. You, you, you know, but my heart and soul still still uh, still lies with rock and roll. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's let's talk about the rock and roll category. Uh, okay. And and who are some of your inspirations, kind of growing up in the rock and roll kind of? Oh, theater? it's easy. Oh, it's easy. Humble Pie. Did you know that band? Humble Pie. No. Uh, you should know these things. Okay, Peter Frampton used to be in a band called Humble Pie. And uh, uh, there's a record, uh, it's actually Humble Pie, uh, it's called Rockin' the <laughs> more East. It's a great record, it's a final band. There was that, there were bands like Gentle Giant, which, which is another obscure, uh, 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 amazing band. Uh, Genesis was amazing. Jameson Lake and Palmer were phenomenal. The Beatles, the Stones, right? Like, 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 like I, I liked really, really cool uh, music that, that, that was real, I guess, All right? Mm -hmm. I mean the Beatles. I mean they're they're like one of the greatest bands. Uh, yeah. like one of the one of the better groups out there. Yep. So yep. I mean, in terms of the Beatles, what sort of records were kind of your favorite um, while while listening and also like producing so many things for so many people? Mm -hmm. uh, there must have been that inspiration to really um, go into this kind of category. Well, 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 you know what the funny thing is, we always talk about the, about the Beatles, and Paul and John stole every great chord, right? So, 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 if you look at the way music is, they well, uh, the people the people that influenced them influenced the Beatles, and that influenced us. Uh, you know, every single Beatles record's phenomenal, right? So, so, so. So I think I think we have to look at the people like that, the Stones, to uh, 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 like like all the early records coming out in the sixties. Leonard Skinner, uh, 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 the Allman Brothers Band, like all those guys were pioneers to where uh, things like that have not been done before. Uh, the fact that punk rock music should be coming out for the fifth time because there's always that cycle but there's nobody coming up behind those uh, those 
amazing bands. ZZ Top's another one, right? But just, just, just phenomenal song, song writing, right? And that's, and that kind of, and that kind of boils down to, if you're going to get into this business, you really have to understand what a song is, right? Mm-hmm. And you talked about the the difficult tasks of being in the industry. Uh, so can you kind of speak on more in depth into what <clears throat> is the most difficult parts of working in the industry and how kind of like hands-on do you need to be and really active uh, to really right. work in a position like you're in right now? Okay, well, the, well, there's a couple of things. The hardest thing about being uh, about being about being in the music business is the is the fact is the hours. Uh, 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 this is a nine, actual nine to five job. It's nine a.m. in the morning un, until five in the morning. Uh, you tend you tend to miss your family. You tend to miss um, um, uh, you tend to miss your kids growing up. So that's a very difficult, you know, time. Then you're also dealing with very uh, creative people, and the fact that they are in music and they want to be in a band or, or, or want to write songs, they, they don't really fit into the regular world, right? They, they're not going to become do- doctors, lawyers. Uh, uh, you guys, great, great thing. Uh, basically, you have to basically do do all that kind of stuff, right? You, you have to you you have to understand what makes somebody tick, right? <laughs> That's the hardest part. Is keeping them all in in line. Mm-hmm. And and you you talked about working with creative people. So let's talk about the most fun parts and enjoyable uh, <laughs> industry. I mean, if, I mean if, if that's one way to make this into a good transition from, I mean, a depressing part of the industry. And, and Well, it's not depressing. It's just, it's just that we, we, uh, we tend to spend because we, we tend to spend and dive in and we tend to, to look at every single molecule of every beat and every chord and every sound and that takes, 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 takes time. When somebody works a, a, a extra regular forty-hour week, we do that in two days, right? So, 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 so it's it, it's because we love it. Now, getting on to the other question, you're saying, I've always had a blast. I've always had fun. Uh, we we've, we've done some pretty crazy fun stuff. Of course. The, you know, no, certain cert, certain certain stories I I can't tell you because and that would uh, basically because of the, the, uh, there's a code code that we have that what happens in the studio stays stays there mm-hmm. <clears throat> for sure I mean I, I I wouldn't want to know what those stories are in the first place because, <laughs> because I, I mean those those are behind the scenes kinds of things and yeah, I yeah. That. Um, uh, but I feel like there there was so many you know hits including one in particular and um he's a guy from toronto and his name is canon um oh yeah 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 and, and, oh, and oh, the for hate the flag. The flag yeah, yeah. Uh, so can you kind of sp- speak on how that process was of coming up with that song and and trying to put it all okay. together okay again that was bob ezrin uh bob ezrin uh, who has done Pink Floyd, The Wall, Alice Cooper, uh, you know, Peter Gabriel, uh, Andrew Bocelli. He was trained, trained, trained by, by my dad. And then Bob went off to do amazing things. Bob was going to be doing this, this song in actually Vancouver. And we had everybody flying in. Bob asked me to help out with them. So I was kind of making sure that things were being marked and logged and I had to go through and get everything ready for the mix. So, 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 so that was really more of the Bob, Bob, the, uh, the Bob show. I was kind of his like assistant. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, what what though? What a great song. Yeah. I mean, really interesting the way that uh, the arrangements were, uh, yeah. how it all came together. And like, that's not what we get to see a, a lot of the days in, in music, especially today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, how, how difficult that is to tell someone that you're in this position while also like singing this part of the verse. Um, and how hard is that to like mix and, and you know, master everything and, and, and trying to 
arrange everyone in the perfect position to make it sound what it is today. Yeah, yeah, but baby, basically the song, uh, when we were done, finished that track, the song was about 300 tracks of of stuff stuff and my job with his uh with bob's 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 engineer corky we had to bounce it down so that it could be manageable uh uh, uh we had we had two by two people coming in it was a actual solo so then we would just have this this person come in and sing a part and this next person come in and sing sing a part uh there was quite the actual cast of characters on that song too right so so that was fun Mm -hmm. And and can you kind of speak on um, what the kind of person Kanon was like? Amazing, uh, and, kind soul, yeah, kind, gentle, phenomenal person. Uh, uh, just had a blast, you know. I mean, yeah, I mean, he 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 really looks like a down to earth guy. Yeah. I mean, his 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 child went to uh, my middle school. Oh really? Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's and cool. My, my uh, phys ed teacher actually got a picture with him, and and here and here's and here's a funny part. And, 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 and this was so unfortunate, but so this was um, in the same time, middle school, my classmate comes up to me, he runs like he's, you know, in a hurry or, right. or he's, he's, he's met Kanon and right. he's met him. Um, he was downstairs in the parking lot and, and, and he runs up to me and he's like, yo, Kanon's in the parking lot. You want to go take a picture with him? <laughs> and I'm like, no, oh, I, I, like I, I didn't know that he was he was in, in the parking lot, and right. as as soon as he went back downstairs, he was gone. And I'm like, oh. great, fantastic, like that. That's that's oh, wonderful. Right. <laughs> like I'm like that's that. I mean, Kanon is uh, he's he's a he looks like a really cool guy. Just to yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, the yeah, that he makes and and being yeah, good, yeah, 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 totally right? cool. nice, right. Okay, here, just let me get this back. Oh, okay, there, there we go. That's better. Okay. Yeah, you have people here today working, so. I mean, I mean, just like what, what a like cool guy Kanon looks yeah. like. It just like the way that he, he goes about his business. Um, he never likes to really um, take any like big attention on himself. It just kind of low key, um, just does what he does, gets out of the studio enjoys life with his family and and that's about it i mean like yeah yeah you have to do artists don't you i mean these days there's so much things that you know people can say about one artist and like the paparazzi and ev everything going on like and it, it's so crazy these days you know how like people treat these these like human beings but they're like they're ourselves like they're just like us just because they have a career that's like so big yep. right it's yep. I mean, how, I mean yeah. how, do you, how do you view that? Well, uh, 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 they're people, right? They're just normal people. Uh, they are a creative, right? So, 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 uh, they're just people that have a talent, right? So, so uh, um, uh, 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 there, there are actually dickhead bankers and there's dickhead lawyers and there's dickhead doctors and there's dickhead singers and there's dickhead drummers and there's wonderfully kind drummers and wonderfully kind singers and there's wonderfully kind lawyers and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. what they're just, they're, there's human beings and, and how, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and how they were raised is actually kind of how they're going to be, right? So so he goes down to the parents, 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 right? So 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 uh, they're just normal human beings that, that that have red blood. They actually breathe the the the, the air, right? That we breathe. So you know they're kind. Absolutely. And, and and in speaking of like Canon and and other records that you know we've all listened to over the years, but a lot of people like used to like they really like listening to the modern day stuff that people are releasing now. And but right. for me, for me, I I'm I'm an oldie. Like I I love like 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 I I, I love the old records like Frank Sinatra, uh, Nat King Cole, um, yep. Vince Vince Gill. I mean Vince Gill is one yep. of my favorites. Um, and, and, you know, I was watching a, um, a YouTube video last night, um, and he was performing with Lyle, uh, Lyle Lovett, 
Yeah, who, who, who I love. Lie, I love it's the best country songwriter ever. I'm sorry. He's, he's phenomenal. Yeah. And, and this was the most hilarious story ever uh, that I've, that I've uh, come across about Vidskill. So I, I, I believe that it was uh, Amy Grant, uh, yeah. and, um, you know, whose wife of uh, Vince Gill. But yeah. what's so hilarious was that uh, he talked about that they were at a, they were at a, I think, uh, a cafe or, mm -hmm. or, or a bar. And Amy Grant, who does not know anything about Vince, um, and she acts like, you know, he's just a stranger that's going to the bar um, and then ask him to perform a song uh, as, as a duet with her. And Vince, Vince says, no, there's no way in hell I would do that because, you know, my voice is, isn't that good. Um, you know, it, it'll, it'll probably be a disaster. Um, right. and, and, and he never liked to be, you know, he never revealed his name to her. Um, so every time that uh, they would talk uh, back in those days, he says that Amy would call him Willis. And then uh, what, what's so hilarious was he would go off key for a majority of the performance. And then at the end, he'll go Stevie Wonder on her. Um, yeah. and, and, then, and then he talked about how her jaw dropped. And then since that day, he's been, she's been still calling him Willis, uh, which, which was so hilarious about that. Um, and oh, you know, good. Those, those, those are the stories that really matter, you know, like, yep. you know, we, we get to see all these types of big people with big careers. Uh, but those, those like lifetime kind of stories is what really captures, uh, the yep. attention and what is so beautiful about artists, you know, they're yep. just like us, you know, they're living it and they're enjoying it. Um, yeah. it's, man, like what, what a guy. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I mean, in, in, in terms of, you know, we've, we've, we've talked about records, we've talked about the difficult parts and the fun parts of, of, of the music business. Um, but I mean, you've, you've had so much like, I mean, how do I put it? You've had so much wisdom and, and advice for so many people. Um, and, you know, you, you won countless awards, um, one including a Juno award for Waving Flag. Um, so can we talk about sort of how you felt in that moment when you found out that uh, you won a Juno award for um, that record. Oh, but no, uh, basically anytime that you can win an award, anytime that you get a gold record or a actual platinum record or, or a double platinum record or, or any kind of kind, kind of an award or anything that you have, have done that gets nominated uh, for anything, it's such an amazing thrill. Um, um, uh, um, I, uh, 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 it never gets old, right? Because because what the what, what that tells you is what you've been doing gets noticed, right? It is nothing better than you you putting in those fourteen hour days or those sixteen hour days. For months upon months upon months upon months upon months, and then so, yeah, the actual, actual group of your peers goes, "This is a great record," or "This wins an award." Um, um, it's a phenomenal feeling, right? So, so um, uh, uh, um, I hope to do it again and again and again. You know, I mean, of course, and and <clears throat> you've you've talked about you know the um the ins and outs of the industry and, and you've talked about that phenomenal feeling that people get um when when you make it a record that's you know so well known um mm -hmm. and that's just been so successful over the years um and then speaking of that um can you explain to me and and the viewers about um you know what do you look for uh and what do you listen for in a new record or a new recording um, that makes you so invested in, in working on it or, or what, what, what goes into that process? Um, you have to have a feeling. Uh, there's the band that's uh, uh, going be coming out here and uh, the band wanted to work with me and I heard the singer and I heard a couple of songs that, uh, that, that I went, okay, there's something here. Right, so 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 it's all goes it all goes by by gut feelings. Um, uh, 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 the singer has to be a star, 
right? The, the, the singer has to have a, a actual personality. Um, um, and if it's not there, if there's no, no something that is amazingly cool. If you look at um, 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 who uh, actually Post Malone, He's a star. He's a he's 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 a phenomenal writer, and when his when his songs come on, you know you know you, you know who he is. Just like when a band that, that I hear, I have to completely believe in uh, what they're doing. Right, my my job job is to then help them bring bring out the best bits and lose the really kind of shitty 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 bits. Right. So, so, so it's all, it's all about a feel, a gut. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and let, let, let me, let me just point this out. Like, honestly, like I've, I've, I've talked to so many people uh, for my podcast. Um, mm -hmm. but I haven't had like someone as real as you, you know, like, <laughs> like, 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 like someone who, who likes to like, really like, you know, crack a lot of jokes uh, yeah. here and there. And, and, well, and that's, and that's what fun. Fun, right. I mean, it's not always about being so serious on on certain topics. And, and no, basically, uh, uh, whenever when, uh, 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 you, you ever like a band shows up, the first thing I tell them is, we have to have fun. If we're not having fun, I don't want to do it. Um, I, I don't want to be boring. I don't want to sit there and have the should tension and everything is so. It's so serious uh, we're gonna get the job done but 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 let's live let's have fun and let's again we have to treat everybody with respect but you can still have fun right so you know, yeah yeah mm, yeah and, and and i mean speaking of fun and stuff um we were we're currently in a um because i'm in i'm in college currently and I'm right. in the uh, uh the radio program um, oh, nice. we're, we're, we're in the work year right now so we're mm. trying to get internships but it's so hard to find one because people yeah. are scared of hiring because of covid protocols and stuff um, yeah yeah um, but one thing in particular that I've, I've applied for and i haven't applied to anywhere else i'm still looking but um i've been so serious on uh, applying for sony music um oh, good. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really fascinated in industry more so yeah um, because I, I really wanted to like really get a behind the scenes look and and you know learn firsthand about what it takes to you know work in uh, uh, an environment like that and and I know you've had a lot of experience in it. Um, so what kind of advice would you give um, in order to you know have the successful kind of um, experience of working in the industry for the first time? Okay, so the, uh, there's a couple things. Uh, show up early. If you're there actually 20 minutes before they want you to be there, then you're late. It's simple. Show up on time. Keep your head down. Use your ears. Listen. And whatever they want you to do, you do it great. Uh, you go, you, you have to go the extra mile. Uh, don't do this job because you, you want to make money, do it because you want to be passionate about it and you want to, you want to help, help actually change people's lives. Uh, if you want to get a real job and you want to make a ton of money, then go become a banker, go become a lawyer, go become a doctor. But if, but if music is your passion, then live it, right? I've never really had a job because I've done what I love. And again, it's a nine to five job, 9 a.m. to 5 a.m. Do whatever it takes. And, 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 and it's amazing how much you will, you will learn if you listen. If you're always talking to someone about something, they're going to go, mm, I don't want to have him around because he talks too much. The thing that my dad taught me when I was really young and I wanted to get into this business, the first, the, 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 actual, the, the very, very first thing he told me was, you, you should be seen but not heard. And I went, oh, okay. And so I, I have always done that. It's amazing what you learn when you let others talk. Um, 
and and that's i mean that's kind of the the things that you know a lot of people will will, will say about you know the industry or any other job that people want to apply for um and i mean you've had the opportunity to probably work with some incredible producers and meet some amazing people uh, mm -hmm. who've also had producing or mixing or engineering um because uh last time i had actually just recently uh, i think yesterday i had a um, mike fraser uh, oh yeah mm -hmm. and, and uh, you're a wonderful human being mike mike if, any, if every engineer was like mike a uh, producer engineer was like mike this would be a fantastic business mm -hmm. um and then we also talked about this other producer that uh is canadian and his name is david foster oh. <laughs> uh, and 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 also you know like what's what's so fascinating about him um uh, you know david foster i was watching his documentary and it's so interesting and i talked to this about uh I talked with this about mike um and it was a scene where I think in the documentary he was with Celine, um, and they were doing the recording for the prayer. Um, right. And Celine would be straight up honest, like everybody else has. And she says she she talks about you know uh, David would make her do seven takes of a song, um, and he and he'll be like I like that, well let's do this part again. And then he and she keeps saying that he'll make you do it over and over and over and over again until he feels it's right. He doesn't care what you think, right? Like he does, but not like necessarily. Yeah. Um, and and that's and that's the most like genius thing about David Foster. And I was wondering if if you had you know met David or had experience working with him. Oh no no no! I've ran into David a few times. Uh, uh, incredibly talented. Uh, uh, the funniest story is uh, that David Foster. Uh, when when uh, he he was starting out, uh, 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 he, uh, he was in Toronto. He, 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 he came in off the street, and and talked talked to my dad for four for for four hours. And uh, my uh, David asked my dad, "So what do what should I do?" And he, yeah, my dad said, "Get the fuck out of Canada," and he did. Right. So, so, so it's kind of like, it's kind of like David has done some incredible work. Right. So, so uh, uh, he's a Canadian icon. Right. So it's good. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's actually hilarious. So you just said like, <laughs> get the F out of Canada. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's David Foster though. Right. I mean, like, Yep. I, 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 I'm not shocked on that at all. Um, um, and, you know, I, I, I've kept watching David Foster's videos and, and his interviews with different people, um, especially the one where he had with uh, Live with Kelly and Ryan. And, you know, he would talk about Michael Buble um, and the story of how he met him. Yep. And, and, you know, he would, he would say that I saw, you know, I met David at a, um, um, I discovered him at a wedding. Um, and, and he's, and he's like, he, he sees him snapping his fingers and singing the song. And then he says that like, you know, I basically told Michael that, you know, move into my guest hall, uh, guest room. Um, I'll give you $5,000 for it. Um, and you're not leaving until you make a record with me. Um, and, and that's like, that's the most fascinating part about David Foster is the way that, you know, when he sees potential, he doesn't give up on it until he gets yeah. something done on yeah. it. Right, yeah, like, yeah, 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 and that's what you, that's what you have to, as a producer, you have to look at the artist, and it's up to you to figure out like a vision for them, and for a drive. Uh, 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 <laughs> I haven't talked talked yet about this, but when I did the first Rage record, uh, uh, my job was to was to capture that that band my job was not to go in and tell them to to actually kind of rewrite that lyric or this song has to be gone and we have to change this part we have to fly this over here we have to do all that stuff my job as a producer was to set it up to uh, uh, uh to capture a feeling i was not there to 
literally uh, 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 make it sound like a Barbara Streisand record or make it sound like a David Foster record. My job was to capture a feeling and to capture a pulse, right? So, 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 so David did, uh, did, did the right thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, speaking of Barbara Streisand, um, I mean, I, I mean, I that's, mean a, that's a good segue. Go ahead. Go. Okay. I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, there's no other way to segue to it. I mean, <laughs> right. Speaking of Barbra Streisand, let's. Uh, I mean, there there was a funny funny part in the um, uh, the the documentary as well, um, and and he he has so much artists that talk about him in that part in that uh, doc. Um, yeah. and, some good and some bad. Right? Yeah, uh, and 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 some shitty. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so th there was this really cool part, and so she's she's having his her piano guy uh, play this piano part of a song, and she she says that it's not quite the way that I want it to sound uh, for the record. Um, so they take a break, they take a break. Um, David walks into the room, starts playing the same piano part that the piano guy was playing. And Barbara Streisand was like, who is that guy? That's the way I want it to sound. Like, that's the way I want it to sound. And that quick, you know, the way that his musical ear kind of tells him, you know, this is how the artist wants it. Um, yeah. But trying to find it in David Foster's way um, is, is so, like, impressive. And that speaks on levels about authenticity, right? Like, being yeah. still being yeah. yourself, but also having the respect for the artist to do what they would like to hear. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Your, your your job is to help the artist, not uh, not uh, uh, not actually dictate, right? Uh, that, uh, that's my feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, you've you've had so much interesting stories that you were sharing um, today. Um, and do you have anything else that like not a lot of people have have been told about? Or, or is there? A <laughs> I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> no, no, I, um, no, no. I, 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 I've been lucky. I've had a great life. I've had a great career. Uh, uh, I'm still current. It's fun. I wouldn't change a thing, right? I get to make music uh, uh, when I'm when, when I'm when I'm not making music. I listen to it all the time. Right. So, 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 so uh, the great thing is music makes you feel whether you're angry about it, you're happy about it, you're sad about it, you're, you're empowered by it. Music is the most wonderful medicine that we have, you have on this planet, you know, you know, and, and it's great that more music is being made. There's some that's shit and there's some that's amazing. Right. So, so, so. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a great song can open up a thousand doors. A shitty song won't get you through the first. Mm -hmm. And you know, especially for me, like trying to write my first song, like yeah. I, like I, I, I'd write with like I put notes down of lyrics, and yeah. I'd be like, that is so garbage. Like no one mm -hmm. wants to hear that. And like I, I get afraid. I'm like, you know, like. Yeah, I'm not gonna ever write a like a hit song that anyone else is making. Right. Like right. I like I wish I wish I had one. Like I wish I had written one. Uh, yeah. But again, like, how do you kind of you know give an artist kind of that mentality of like you know you can do this. Um, doesn't matter if it's you know a garbage song or or not. Like your first song isn't going to be that great. Like it it's going to be like any other start out song. Like you're gonna have a one hit wonder somehow. Yeah, a lot of artists start out, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, you could look at it this way: um, 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 when you go to school to become actually a doctor, it takes you years and 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 years, and then you become a doctor. When you when you want to become actually a lawyer, you go to school. It takes years and 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 years to become a lawyer. Why do we not? get taught and learn and go, go to school to learn how to write songs. Uh, uh, when you go to school, you don't go to school to become a doctor. And then within the first month, you're like, okay, you are now a doctor. You're going to go 
open up this guy's head, yeah, hey, hey, I can fix it. Um, um, uh, uh, you have to understand that you have to put in your, 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 your actual, your actual, your actual 20,000 hours of time. The Beatles spent years and years writing before they became uh, basic song right 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 they were they were they were like young kids and then they became then they became the beatles it took them a long time so so uh, um uh, you know what you have to practice you have to learn what doesn't work and you have to learn what does work you know and 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 study for, study from great song writers right study how they write songs uh, uh, there's so many phenomenal writers that you can learn from you, you know you know it's just that you have to you, you have you, you have to put the time in mm -hmm. um and you know you've you've talked about the uh, the importance of you know putting in that time um not only to work on your craft but also um don't be afraid to reach out to other people in the industry to yeah you know, pick their brains about, you know, different things. Um, and, the, and, and the things that I'm doing right now, you know, networking with people, um, yeah. you know, to interview them, ask them questions about like, e even though it may be a tough question or maybe it may be a question that other people have asked before. Um, you know, it's just those little things that really help someone kind of elevate their careers and, yeah. and trying to get them on the right path. Um, and so, I mean, do you have any other advices for people, young people who want to do music or, or want to learn in the industry or just even write songs for themselves? Just, uh, you know what, care, work hard. And uh, uh, there's a great story. Uh, 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 this engineer friend of mine, producer engineer friend of mine, Kevin Churko. And Kevin Churko is a phenomenal producer. He's a phenomenal human being he studied under mutt 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 lang and mutt lang has done you know the who's who and kevin said mutt how can they be like you and mutt turned to him and said be great you know so 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 if you want to get into the into this industry be great be good work hard head down and don't don't, and, and don't stop just just keep at it and 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 you're gonna fall you're gonna you're gonna get bumps and bruises but if this is your passion don't stop until you get there right it, it, it's 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 hard work i did it for four years kevin did it mike fraser did it we, we all did it the people that actually went to the top we we put in countless amounts of hours we 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 did we did uh, we did whatever it took, mm -hmm. right? So 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 the word the word, the word of vice is just 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 uh, 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 just don't stop, right? Just you know do it. I guess the you know what that that she the Nike ad just do it, right? I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think like, you know, there, there's a certain right way to do it or a certain wrong way to do it. I think there is just that that path where like, you're just gonna have to figure it out at, at some point in time. Um, and, and, and you may not like it or not, uh, you know, it may not turn out as, as the pathway that you wanted to, but you have to also take, I mean, you, you have to take it very lightly on itself and, and try not to take it personally. Yep. Um, it, it's not like you know people don't want to listen to your music um well it's their choice to whether or not they want to listen to your music um and and here's and here's another funny thing i was actually um on tiktok and i saw this uh girl from american idol um and her name is sophia james and mm -hmm. she made a tiktok and this was so like real and such truth speaking she says that you know it's so awkward that like she she has to promote herself and then she laughs about it and she's like, you know, why do I have to promote myself? It feels, I, I, I hate promoting. I hate promoting. Uh, but then again, she's like, I have to make money. 
I have to make money. What other way do I have? Yeah. yeah. You don't have to get well, you guys to listen to my music. I, you, I'm not saying that you have to like it. You don't. I mean, and then she just keeps saying that, like, you know, why do I, you know, have to promote myself? I hate it. I hate it, but I still have to do it. And then she goes, well, I have another single coming up. Uh, if you want to listen to it, pre-save oh, it. Yeah, of course. Of course. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of like uh, there's, a lot, uh, there, there's a lot of people that 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 have to do this but then they don't feel comfortable doing it right we run out of lots of people that hate doing that hate doing social media but then there's some that do it and make a fucking fortune and it's like i, I you know what i don't get it but that's that's not my place to get it because i'm actually i'm a actual 63 year old white dude that doesn't understand these young kids that, that are on with their phones and they're snapping themselves and they're on Instagram and they're on TikTok. Tick, tick, that that whole concept I don't get, you know, but that's their thing. It's their time to shine, right? You, you know what? It's great for them. For sure. Um... Anyways, I, I I know that I mean you have a big plate to work on still. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, you, I mean I know that you have a tight schedule, yeah. um, so I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Yeah. I know it's oh, a bit great. time, so I mean, uh, thank no, you. It's fun. Um, this was this is a lot of fun. Good, uh, good. I, mean, yeah. I look forward to uh, maybe connecting with you down the road somehow. Yep. Uh, yeah, you will. You will. I see you have drive, so it's good. All right. Um, thank you so much again. Okay. Peace out. Love and much and all that stuff. That was Canadian record producer and music engineer, Garth Richardson. Thank you again for listening to this episode. If you're new to my podcast, feel free to check out my show that is available on all podcast streaming platforms. Thank you so much for listening and stay tuned for more episodes right here on the Jigme Counseling Show.